Now, oil-producing countries have agreed to increase production from next month in an attempt to keep a lid on prices. Oil prices have been rising strongly this year as growth in the global economy accelerates with the lifting of COVID restrictions in many parts of the world. Well, OPEC and others, including Russia, have agreed the increase following cuts last year as prices plunged at the height of the COVID crisis. Well, joining me now to discuss this is the energy analyst and consultant, Cornelia Meyer. Cornelia, very good to see you this morning. Now, this was a very hard-fought uh, agreement, wasn't it? Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates were at loggerheads throughout the period. What, what was the row about? Well, the row was about, great being with you, Ian, the row was about um, the baseline from which these production cuts are calculated. And the United Arab Emirates, you know, argued that it had invested billions of dollars in upping its production capacity. And if this agreement, as it now has been, was extended to 2022, it would have been sort of a four-year span, and this was not fair. So in the end, something had to give, and the UAE sort of got about half of what it wanted in terms of that baseline. But also Saudi and, and Russia got 500,000 barrels up in their baseline, and Kuwait and Iraq also got something. Now, this is going to raise production to the tune of around $400,000 per day. How far will that go in terms of mopping up extra demand created by the global economic recovery? It's not going very far, but and markets are woefully, woefully undersupplied to the tune of about two, 2 million barrels a day. But, you know, it's 400,000 barrels a day in August, then 400,000 barrels a day in, um, in October throughout until about September next year, when the whole production cuts, which were decided in, um, in and when the going was so tough last uh, April last year, um, will be will be released. So it's a gradual release of barrels. On that basis then, Cornelia, would you expect to see pressure for further uh, increases in production come the end of the year? Well, it really depends. What I would see is from OPEC, probably a plus, probably not, but from consumers, it could be. It, a lot depends on where we're going with demand. And, you know, it, right now the economy is growing and it's great, but this Delta um, variant really causes a lot of uh, distress in now, east of Suez, Indonesia, Vietnam, and so on, and China, which is bad for growth there. Um, and there's also more incremental barrels potentially coming on from Iran if they reach a nuclear agreement. So on both sides, right now, the market looks tight. But depending on what happens a few months down the road, it may look different. What would the consequences have been, Cornelia, of this agreement not having been reached? Well, it had to be reached because, you know, this OPEC plus um, uh, alliance, the, the, 20, uh, the, the 13 OPEC countries and their 10 friends who are led by Russia, really helped the markets um, recover. Remember, in April 2020, there was a day when the US benchmark WTI turned negative. So it really helped recover that, that, that really broken oil market. So we, we, do need, we do need that supply side management that actually only OPEC plus can provide. And having it extended through the end of 2022 gives predictability in incredibly uncertain times. And what about the willingness of countries to observe the production quotas? I mean, uh, Russia, for example, is pretty notorious for, it, for ignoring uh, agreements that it's made in the past. Is everyone going to stick to what they've agreed? Well, they have so far. I mean, last month, um, last month compliance um, of OPEC plus, plus the other 10 countries was about 110%. So, you know, there's the two gentlemen who run what they call the Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee, which is His Royal Highness Prince Abdelaziz bin Salman, who is the Energy Minister of um, Saudi Arabia, and the Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak. They... They run this with a pretty iron fist, and um, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of a country that didn't observe what it had to observe. 
Cornelia, what about the implications for US shale producers? I mean, these, these have obviously become some of the sort of swing producers in uh, recent times. They have lower production costs in some cases, much higher in others. Is there any knock-on effect for these guys? Well, if oil prices stay at a certain higher level, they will come back on. But, you know, interestingly enough, they've been very reluctant and very slow in coming back on. So we will have to see we will have to see what happens. They will need to be feel comfortable that prices sort of remain constantly above 60, 65 dollars to really do that. They're also highly levered and um, it's it, it's you know, these days it's hard to, to, to get more credit. Uh, briefly, uh, Cornelia, there's been a lot of talk in the market in recent weeks about one hundred dollars per barrel. Presumably this agreement takes that off the table for the time being. Yeah, I think it takes it off the table. I think that was a bit that was a bit that was a bit premature. And you know, I think the good thing about this OPEC plus mechanism is they review every month. They review what's done and they can tweak and adjust. So I think these 23 countries are very committed to keeping markets adequately supplied. All right, Cornelia. Very good to talk to you this morning. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much, Ian.